So hello and welcome to this um, quick and poorly prepared overview of what's new in Cabbage 2. So as you can see, the entire interface has undergone a fairly dramatic uh, overhaul. So um, yeah, it's the whole thing has been redesigned from the ground up and rewritten, recoded everything. So and the first thing you see is a great big green cabbage, which is the most important thing. Um, you also have a new project type, you can select a different project type, you can just go for basic C sound because Cabbage 2 can now handle standard C sound files, anything from C sound manual can be loaded and run in Cabbage 2. And you can then select uh, different options. You can obviously basically create any type of uh, instrument you want, but if you want to use a template code, for example, if I click on synth, and I will just save this as a Yes, replace that. Okay, yes. And that should bring this up. So, um, first synth is just a basic synth with a simple ADSR envelope and a um, voltage controlled oscillator, a VCO2, which is kind of a band limit sort of waveform. Now, what's new? So, in settings, we have the same audio and MIDI settings. You've got your audio input and um, audio output. Um, you can select anything that's available to you on your PC. I'm running with um, I'm running Cabbage here on OS 10, um, but obviously same as Cabbage One, it'll run on Windows and Linux just as well. Uh, obviously, the audio input and output options override the C sound options that you might have up here. Well, the CSD options are the C, C sound options that are related specifically to audio and MIDI. The rest of the options uh, are going to be fine, like these options here, for example, which let you. Um, interpret the MIDI information that's coming into the instrument. And miscellaneous settings, you've got um, autocomplete, which is now um, kind of, it's enabled by default, or maybe not, you have to check that, I'm not quite sure. Um, that gives you this type of um, access to kind of a drop down list of various opcodes and um, variables that have already been declared in your code. Another big thing is the uh, you can customize the look and feel of the entire user interface. Um, that's completely customizable now. So if you want to change the if you're not happy with the code coding theme, you can change that. Um, you can change the strings comments if you want comments in red, for example. You can have comments in red. I like to have my comments in green. Um, and then there's also a code repository down here, which is completely empty at the moment because I haven't added anything to it. Uh, okay, so we've also got kind of new, um, let's call it a tab button up here that lets you manage your instance of your instrument. Uh, I can click on the edit plugin GUI and then when I click on any of the objects on screen, you can see it still interacts directly with the code. Um, but now I also have um, a nice little properties editor here so I can change for example if I want to change the color to white notes and I want to make oh wait for this I'm going to make the white notes black kind of and I'm going to make the black notes white <laughs> he's not he is he did it it's done there you go ultimate confusion for all players now uh, what else do I have here uh, yeah I can right click and I can add in any number of different widgets um, same kind of widgets as before. We have, oh, we've got view meters now this time, and we've got also um, a string sequencer. We've got a few few extra things um, that weren't there before, but just to kind of we also have standard standard widgets here. You can resize, you can drag them around, and again, when you click on them, highlight the code in the text, um, or highlight the text in the code, whatever. Uh, you can change color like this, it'll update in real time. And once you're happy with those changes, you just save the instrument or you go build instrument and then everything's fixed. Um, of course, you can still export, export plugin as nowadays. By default, you can export as a VST plugin effect, VST plugin synth, or you can export it as an AU plugin effect or an AU plugin synth. So that's kind of neat. Uh, what else? So yeah, let's see. You can also open up multiple. You can open up multiple instruments, um, and you can have them running at the same time. You can also, let's see, show Cabbage Patcher, which is exposes the audiograph, the audiograph. And as soon as you 
play an instrument here, it's going to just get rid of that. Bounce uh, It's going to show up on the um, audio graph. So as soon as you save an instrument or build your instrument, it's going to pop up here. Um, this is running in the background the whole time. Most some users will never need to use it or expose it, but often if you want to create more complex signal chains, you can. For example, I could send a synth into this. And we can turn up the feedback so we can kind of hear it. So, and then we can manipulate that stuff. So that's kind of cool as well. Pull it down. That's kind of cool as well. Um, so you can, and you can save those cabbage patches. So you can save the cabbage patch. That's called cabbage patch because it's kind of a patcher. Um, what else do you have? Oh yeah, you've got OpenSeaSound file from Raspberry Pi, and that's in here if you want to set up your Raspberry Pi to communicate with Cabbage. And do so in here. Uh, put in the um, SSH home directory and the SSH address, and then you can bounce files over and back between the Raspberry Pi and Cabbage. Uh, what else? Oh, you've got a, um, a section here that lets you navigate quickly through your source code. Uh, you can actually add custom tags that will kind of populate in this list as you add them and then it'll update and it'll hopefully allow you to navigate your source code a lot quicker than usual. Uh, what are things? Yeah, you've got integrated help. If you press um, Command 1 on a Mac, it should take you to the um, help file. I'm running a, a debug version of this in the background, so my help files aren't embedded into the application bundle. That's why that didn't work. Um, but for any of you using the versions released online, that will work. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, there's some other kind of goodies that um, we discussed and we've kind of developed on, on the forum. Like, for example, you um, can develop your own widgets now using um, custom kind of XML type in, um, definition, file definitions. Uh, that's still in kind of beta testing um, and still you can still do all the usual stuff as before you can use SVGs and you can use pings if you want to theme your, your GUIs and stuff like that as well. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's all that's new in Cabbage 2 except for I'm sure I've forgotten some things. I just want to keep saying that's all that's new in Cabbage 2 because it rhymes. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask me about them on the... Uh, Cabbage Forum, which is still at forum.cabbageaudio.com. Thank you. Goodbye.